They came from all over. Many waited months, some even years, just to board this tour bus. A 65-mile bus ride north of the Las Vegas Strip. Their destination? A place that is unique in all the world, top secret, with incredible security, the Nevada test site. A controversial area the size of the state of Rhode Island, a place where the United States government tested 928 nuclear bombs between 1951 and 1992. The last test was September of 1992. And for these tourists, it's an all-day journey to a pockmarked landscape that bears the scars of America's nuclear testing program. Chuck, you're right at ground zero. Right, what you're seeing right here is where an atmospheric nuclear test went off in May of 1955. This structure is what held the cables that held the tower. But somehow this survived. Right. Not everything was destroyed. A lot of people think everything gets vaporized, but they don't. And that's exactly why people come here, to see what's left of the images made famous in these Defense Department videos. Doomstown homes that survived the nuclear storm to the site of the Sedan Crater, where a massive underground thermonuclear device was set off to see if nukes could be used to move Earth. You can't appreciate the size of a crater that's um, 1,500 feet across until you're standing on the edge of it. You know, that's why I wanted to see that, the power of what was done here. From nuclear bombs fired from a cannon to bombs being dropped from planes, the government filmed every aspect of these tests. Images that survive today thanks to the reconstruction work of Southern California filmmaker Peter Curran. Uh, I, I got a lot of cooperation uh, from the government and I wanted to put together something that was interesting. Among the most jaw-dropping moments of the film, images of U.S. soldiers and government workers charging towards the mushroom cloud. Ernie Williams knows firsthand about what went on here. He worked at the Nevada test site in the 1950s and 60s and witnessed 80 nuclear explosions. Describe for me as best you can what that would be like to see one of these things go off. First thing you're going to hear is a huge loud blast and then uh, the next thing you'll feel is the heat and then this all happens within just a few seconds and, and, and then the shock wave is going to hit you. What happens when that hits you? Well, you better be down uh, with your hands on your knees and stuff, because if you're standing at a parade rest, you're going down. Ernie is one of the lucky ones. At 78 years old, he's cancer free, unlike many of his former colleagues. They're called atomic veterans, who also witnessed the tests. And it's unfortunate uh, there's not many around anymore to talk about these things that happened in the late 40s and the early 50s. There are reminders of past dangers, from warning signs to a mid-tour check of the bus. But the government says there's no radiation risk to the tourists who come here each year. Maybe some people would think, well, it's a bit strange that you would come to a place like this. I don't think so. I think it's just a, a desire to know what went before us and to appreciate what we, what we are capable of doing. It's an unusual vacation, to be sure, to witness the power and legacy of America's nuclear graveyard a journey to the first ground zero. What they're getting is something that is top secret, that hasn't heretofore been open to them. So it, it has that enamor to them, that they're seeing something that the normal person doesn't get to see.